Hello, welcome to AC Picks and my Japanese socks film commentary, which relate to my upcoming film guide for women. My sock videos focus on mainstream movies and what they have to offer female viewers. These videos are directed primarily at adult female humans. Today I'm going to talk about Stand By Me, released in 1986. For this commentary, I'm going to incorporate a great suggestion made by my friend Charlie, who told me it would be useful to include more context. Stand By Me is an R-rated adventure drama that runs one and a half hours. The screenplay, written by Reynold Gideon and Bruce A. Evans, is based on a Stephen King novel. The film was directed by Rob Reiner and tells the story of four teenage boys who go looking for the body of a dead boy who went missing in Oregon earlier that summer. The boys are played by Will Wheaton, River Phoenix, Corey Feldman, and Jerry O'Connell. Stand By Me made over 52 million American dollars at the worldwide box office. Keep in mind that this figure is in unadjusted dollars. It is a very respectable sum. It was a very popular movie and is still well known. Unfortunately, it has very little to offer female viewers. It scores poorly for women's presence and voice. There are no significant female characters. Women get very few lines, and no two women ever speak, so it fails the Bechdel test. That's a test that serves as an indicator of the active presence of women in movies. The aspect of the film I'm going to shine a spotlight on today is the language used in reference to women and girls. This is one of the dozens of things I keep track of in feature films. Part of the reason for this is that language is very revealing about filmmakers. It tells us a lot about how well or poorly they think of women. The language in Stand By Me is coarse, sexist, sexualized, and degrades women and girls. It demonstrates a lack of regard for women and girls that merits attention. Let's examine the evidence. River Phoenix refers to his female teacher as a bitch. To insult each other, the boys call each other girls and pussy. A boy calls another boy a son of a whore. Will Wheaton says Mayor Grundy barfed on his wife's tits. He says to his friends about vomit. And then your mother goes around the corner and she licks it up. He says to Kiefer Sutherland, why don't you go home and fuck your mother some more? Teenage boys also say, I think Annette's tits are getting bigger. And, what a blimp, no shit, she looks like a Thanksgiving turkey. The latter comment is made about the boy's cousin. Also, a boy says, I've been seeing her for over a month now, and all she's let me do is feel her tits. To which Sutherland replies, You want to get laid, you gotta get yourself a Protestant. This type of language in reference to women and girls is common in mainstream movies and can be heard in many movies based on Stephen King novels. It does nothing to increase people's regard for women and girls. Indeed, it normalizes disregard for women and girls. Moreover, it is worth noting that none of the female characters have a first name. Frances Lee McBain, who plays Wheaton's mother, is credited as Mrs. Lachance. The other women are credited as waitress, mayor's wife, and fat lady. I look forward to sharing my findings about mainstream movies of the 20th and 21st centuries and what they have to offer female viewers in my upcoming film guide for women, which contains 500 feature film reviews. Thank you for watching. As always, please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. You might also want to check out my new coffee table book about adult female humans entitled What is a Woman? I posted an introductory video about it on July 22nd. What is a Woman is available at blurb.ca. I'll post the link in the description below. Thanks again. Speak up and stay safe.